up guys, guys here. And just here guys. All right guys, so something a little unexpected happened. So a little time back, uh, we actually helped our homie by storing his car at the house. Um, that car was being an ISF. Um, we didn't really make a video on that because just for privacy reasons, it's his car, it's not ours. Uh, we were originally gonna try to clickbait that car, but eh, it wasn't really something that we wanted to do. But now something uh, arised and uh, we're gonna make a move and pick something up today. I'll let Gus go ahead and explain the whole ISF uh, scenario or story. Yeah, so we are gonna pick up uh, the motor from the ISF. We're storing it at the house because um, it was pretty much the last owner where the ISF was bought from. Um, I don't know if he had uh, ran it longer. It was overheating, that's what I'm thinking, it was overheating. And if you guys know, if you run a motor when it's overheating and you still keep running it, while it's overheating, a gas can pop or something and then the motor can cause it to start knocking. And that's unfortunately what started to happen. The motor started knocking. Um, the motor, I think, has like I want to say 140, like 140,000 140, miles. Yeah. So it was kind of uh, weird for it to start knocking on an ISF motor. I mean, I've never heard of you know, 140, but um, that's that's exactly what happened. The motor started knocking. So our buddy ended up getting a new, a new motor, swapping it in, and uh, pretty much gonna go pick up this ISF motor um, and see what we do with it. I mean, ideally, you know, us being car enthusiasts, uh, it makes us want to like try to slap it in the, in the IS 300s. But also, since we got it for free, it's also uh, we got to think of it, think of it as an opportunity to be responsible and uh, potentially make some money on it. So we don't know entirely uh, what we're gonna do with the car. I mean, with the motor yet, but we're definitely gonna be making some content on it, regardless of what we do with it. And just for right now, we're just gonna enjoy this drive. It's raining. Um, that's why we didn't make we didn't make the intro earlier in the drive, but we've been on the road for like an hour already. We're almost there, um, and yeah, we'll give you guys a little update once we either have it on the truck or if we can possibly record it prior to us getting it on the truck. Uh, we'll give you guys a little update, but but yeah, guys. Yeah, the next the next thing is just uh, gonna have to get a cherry picker, get a put on a motor stand, and then maybe we'll take it apart and see where the issue went wrong, where it started pinging, and why it started knocking, and go from there. But like as Jesse said. Uh, might just end up uh, parting it out or selling it and doing the smart thing or we can just put it in IS 300 and uh, that's, <laughs> what I was, abuse. that's what I was telling Gus like ideally like my ideal setup would be that with the CD09 behind it and that's that sounds like a great time that sounds like party time right there but you know responsible us uh, we might end up just selling it or parting it out you know parting out the heads and then figuring out the problem possibly even sh selling the short block afterwards but we'll see what we do just for right now we're gonna go ahead and pick it up yeah just stay tuned it's gonna be a little serious if you guys are interested in what an ISF motor looks like internally and uh, just see what happened with the motor stay tuned
what is up guys so as you guys can see the motor is on the bed uh, we're currently we're currently just idling right here uh, in front of the shop uh, we're gonna take a little quick lunch break uh, he's gonna spot us the lunch just for him for us doing him basically a favor of just taking this junk but <laughs> <laughs> but I mean there's still some value on the car I mean on the actual motor itself uh, there's still plenty of parts that uh, he's gonna keep but uh, we're gonna keep the remainder of it and mainly the things that he's gonna be keeping are like coil packs uh, just little sensors here and there but besides that uh, the motor is on the bed um, ideally we would have wanted to have the actual motor up against the back of the, the bed but since the motor is kind of heavy we just left it back there so when we get, whenever we get the picker we can just pick it from right there where it's at and it's strapped it's not gonna go anywhere we made sure the straps were nice and tight so for right now we're gonna go ahead go ahead and eat and then once we get to the house we'll give you guys a little a little glimpse of the motor I mean this motor is a lot bigger than like a normal 2j and it's, it's cool I mean we'll see we'll see what comes from it yeah. all right guys so here is the motor uh, we're currently sitting here in the in and out parking lot just want to give you guys a quick little glimpse uh, we're about to have some grub but here we have the 2UR this is from the ISF it's actually from a 2008 has 140,000 miles and it honestly doesn't even look that bad um, the rear main seal was still good, um, but it did seem to have like a little bit of a leak here. I don't know if it was just from the actual soft itself. It looks like that's been on there for a while. And besides that, we still haven't even expected it. Uh, I was gonna try to look through the exhaust ports and see if possibly one of the valves was bad. We just had no time though. We just loaded it up and that's pretty much it. Yeah, we have it set up in a way that, I mean, we're not very proud of how it's set up, but it's gonna get the job done. The yeah, it doesn't not, move. It's not moving. Yeah. Um, but the only thing the owner wants is these uh, what is this it's like the camshaft position yeah sensor position the sensors to the camshaft what is the fuel pump a uh, few injectors a couple little little things basically all the sensors he wants yeah all the sensors to whatever's I guess has a little bit of value that you can sell and make some money because he did have to buy another ISF motor like his car is back up and running but he ended up buying another another motor that was direct uh, plug and play and uh, we're just gonna give him back those parts so he can make some money back from that and then we're gonna be able to make some money too if we choose to go that route but we'll see what comes from it and go from there we'll, we'll, up, we'll update you guys when we arrive all right guys so as you guys can see we have officially made it home uh, there's the sexy beast back there but here's the motor uh, I mean for right now we have to leave it on the actual truck because our buddy does not have the picker right now and we don't have our own uh, this makes us want to have our own but we'll eventually have one but for right now it's just gonna chill on here nothing that nothing can really affect it here it's under a roof I guess and yeah guys uh, so we're gonna be making another video where we actually tear down the motor uh, the person who gave us the motor actually wants us to do that that he wants us to learn basically how the ins and out of the ins and outs of the of this motor and I guess we'll do that um, since he has the ISF still and it has another motor in it. I'm sure uh, just seeing everything torn down would give him some motivation to like, you know, do more stuff on his car. But, but yeah, guys, we just want to give you guys this little outro and let you guys know what the motor is here at the house. And uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, we'll keep you guys updated with uh, when we get a engine stand for it, the cherry picker and all that. Just stay tuned if you guys want to see more videos on the ISF motor. But yeah, guys, thank you.